Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another live stream. Um, my name is Jessica. I am the director of the planetarium, and with me tonight is one of my students who I'll let say hi and introduce himself. Hi, I'm Brayden. I'm a vocal music education student here at UMD. <laughs> yes. And let's make her angry. Um, we have our feline overlord with us tonight as well. Miss Nova is joining us once again for our stream. Um, so as always, when we have the kitty present, anything weird that happens, she probably sat on my keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, that's the chaos you get when you get Nova on the streams as well. <laughs> All right, well, um, happy February. I don't know how that happened, but it's we so are, strange. we're in February. Um, which means since we're at a new month, uh, our show tonight is our, I almost said annual, monthly WhatsApp show uh, where we will take a look at the astronomical events that you can look forward to for February. Um, Peak, I don't know if you see my gorgeous, colorful new backgrounds. It's one of the latest James Webb images. I mean, how could I not change it? <laughs> so cool. All right. Um, I should actually do that myself. That's a good idea. I, I was getting that. a little tired of the Hubble Deep Field, which I can't believe I, those words just came out of my mouth. But, um, yeah, <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted something new. Um, oh. All right. Let me get us all set up. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Nova is appearing and disappearing. Um, that's the, yeah, <laughs> it's great. Um, okay, so as we go through the show, as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Um, Brayden will keep an eye on that for me. We'll let me know when questions come up. If we don't get to them right away, don't worry. We will answer questions at the end of the stream as well. Um, but let's get going with our what's up for February um, and the topic that everyone is talking about right now. Oops. Why did that do that? Okay. There we go. The topic that everyone is talking about now is Comet C 2022 E3, the new comet that we can see up in our sky. Um, so it has made its closest approach to Earth today. Um, it actually happened a little bit earlier for us. Um, so tonight would be a fantastic time to go out and try and see it. Um, it is not naked eye visible last that I checked. Um, so you do need at least a pair of binoculars to be able to see it. But if you want to see it, you'll head out tonight. Um, it is now up for most of the night. It's not just early morning anymore, but it will be located about two fists size um, south southwest of the North Star Polaris um, so that is how you can find it now if you don't want to go out or the weather's not cooperating or maybe you don't have a pair of binoculars to go see the comet don't worry um, the virtual telescope project is actually doing a live stream of the comet starting at 10 p.m. Central Time I have the link to that Video, um, to their YouTube channel, uh, where they're going to host their live stream in the video in the uh, description of the video, um, so you can click on that tonight and see the comet through their telescope. Um, I think it's really awesome that they're doing this. Now, just because the comet makes its closest approach tonight does not mean that it will suddenly not be visible anymore. Um, just like it's been visible for the nights leading up to this, it will continue to be visible over the next couple weeks. Um, as we go through the next several weeks, weeks, it is slowly going to move across the sky. Um, so right now, let me find the time frame. There we are. Right here, we have our comet, um, and over the next several nights, you're going to see it's slowly making its way towards the constellation Auriga um, and towards Mars. Um, and so this will give you kind of an idea of where to look at. Um, it's going to continue to move more and more southward and westward, um, more westward, I guess, across the sky. Um, so you will still be able to see it again, though uh, you definitely need a, 
at least a pair of small binoculars to be able to see it. Um, but yeah, that is our comet update. Moving on, let's take a look at what the moon is doing this month. Uh, we are starting off the month uh, with our first moon phase, or major moon phase, being the full moon, which is happening in just a couple days on the 5th. Um, the full moon of February is known as the snow moon, which if you're up here in northern Minnesota like we are, uh, that makes a lot of sense. because There is a whole bunch of snow out on the ground right now. Um, this moon will also be a mini moon or a micro moon, which I'll talk more about in just a minute. Um, so we have our full moon on February 5th, um, about a week after that on the 13th we'll have the third quarter, about a week after that on the 20th is the new moon, and then about a week after that on the 27th is our first quarter. Um, so you can see here the uh, times that the moon will rise and set for these different phases. Um, this does show that the moon is sometimes up during the day, sometimes up during the night. It just depends on where it is in its orbit around the Earth and therefore what phase it's in. But let's talk about that mini moon slash micro moon. Now, I know in the past um, we have talked about super moons. Well, a micro moon is caused by the same or similar situation as a supermoon. So essentially, the moon's orbit around the Earth is not perfectly circular. It's a little bit elliptical. So because of that, that means that sometimes in the month, the moon is a little bit closer to the Earth, and sometimes it's a little bit further. So a supermoon happens when the moon is in a full moon phase when it's at its closest approach to Earth. A mini moon or a micro moon is the opposite. It's when a full moon happens when the moon is the furthest away from the Earth. And this causes the moon to look just a little bit smaller than its average size. For this particular mini moon, it's happening a little bit after the moon is at its furthest, um, so this mini moon or micro moon is going to look about 5% smaller than its average size. Um, you can see here some comparisons of, you know, the average moon, the micro moon, and the super moon. To be honest with you, it's probably not something that you will notice unless you are actively trying to look for it. Um, but it is happening. The moon will appear just slightly smaller. Um, during the full moon this month. All right. Um, another thing with our winter full moons, winter full moons get incredibly or get higher in the sky than summer full moons. Um, and so that bright full moon high in the sky can actually be bright enough to cast shadows during nighttime. Um, that's why winter full moon nights can be extremely bright, um, which I think is really cool. I mean, it creates first these gorgeous pictures. And yes, that's the moon shining, not the sun that you're seeing. Um, but it also leads to fun things like I know around here, there are things like full moon hikes um, that people will take because it's bright enough with the full moon to be able to easily see to go on these, these nighttime uh, snowy hikes. Um, not necessarily something that I want to go out to, but for those who are inclined to do so, it does look like it would make a fun adventure. We, we do have a couple comment questions. Okay. Go for it. Uh, does the tidal pole diminish with the micro moon? Oh, good question. Yes. Yes, it does. Um, so tides are caused by the moon tugging on the earth. Um, and since uh, not diminished, though, they'll actually be a little bit stronger during the, uh, during the, the, no, sorry, I have it backwards. Yes, they will be, <laughs> sorry, it's been a long day, guys. Um, okay, tides are caused by the, earth, by the moon's gravitational tug on the Earth. Since during a mini moon, that is when the moon is furthest away, um, that means we are experiencing a little bit less of a gravitational tug, so the tides are a little bit lower during that time of the month, absolutely. Um, and opposite is true, too. When the moon is closest to the Earth, we have the strongest tides. Um, and so you'll see that even if you, I mean, if you live 
on the, the coast, you pretty in tune with the tides, um, but you will see that the strength of the tides does vary throughout the month because of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, then we have a couple more questions uh, asking, uh, uh, the full moon will be in opposition to the sun and which constellation is, in, is the sun in now? Uh, which I do not know off the top of yeah, my I, head. Because... I don't know off the top, but this is a great application of a program like Stellarium. Yeah, I um, was say. Yeah, it'll let you figure figure that out. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head um, because it's not something yeah. I've looked at. Um, but yeah, you can easily figure that out with, with a program like Stellarium. The same could be said for the next question, uh, and in which constellation will the moon be in when it's in its fullest? Yeah, I would just go to Stellarium and you can just do yep. that yourself. And if we have time at the end, um, I, I can pull up Stellarium and show show how to do that. But um, for now, I think we caught up on questions. Correct. All right. Well, let's keep going. Um, next up, we're going to look at what the planets are doing. Uh, first, we have Mercury, still visible in our morning sky. Um, so just before sun sunrise, low on the southeastern horizon, you can see a little Mercury there. Um, so you can see this is looking out about 7 a.m. Now, it is very low in the sky, um, and over this month, it will continue to move closer and closer to the sun, which is going to put it lower and lower on the horizon. Um, so if you want to see Mercury, you're definitely going to need to go do that soon, because by mid-month, it is going to be nearly impossible to see because of how close it is to the sun once again. Uh, and that's it for our morning sky. Everything else is taking place uh, just after sunset and later at night. Hi, Noah. Um, so looking over in our evening sky now, looking over in the west-southwest, um, just after sunset, we have Venus continuing to be nice and bright up in the sky. In fact, um, if you're out right around sunset and you see, like, the first really bright-looking star um, over in the west, what you're seeing is Venus. Uh, that's why it's sometimes known as the evening star, because it's generally the first point of light that you will see in the evening when it's up in the west. Um, and that's also why it's the morning star, because when it's up in the morning time, it's the, the last thing that you see, the one still bright thing you see once the sun is um, about to rise. Um, sitting really low, on the horizon, we have Saturn still just barely hanging out there. Um, again, it's continuing to make its way closer to the sun. Um, so Saturn is really pretty much out of our viewing range at this point, unless you're, you're able to sneak it right at sunset. Um, but we're probably saying goodbye to Saturn um, in the next couple weeks as it moves its way um, closer to the sun. It should be making... Um, its closest approach to the sun mid-month, so around the 16th, uh, and then, sorry guys, uh, Nova wants down, um, so say goodbye to Nova, she wants off my desk. Okay, um, so once Saturn has passed the sun um, in its orbit and, and starts going back out the other way it will start picking up in our morning sky again but we're going to have to wait until probably um, mid-march in order to see it um hanging out in the evening sky we've also got jupiter still really bright up in the southwest it will probably be the next bright object that you see after Venus appears, you'll then see Jupiter before you see any other stars, because these are going to be the two brightest objects um, over in the West. Um, going a little bit later into the evening, um, you can see Venus now has gotten a little bit closer to the horizon uh, since we've gone a little bit later into the evening. Um, we still got Jupiter hanging out there. In between Jupiter and Venus, we have Neptune. Um, high up over in the south-southeast, we have Mars. 
And in between Mars and Jupiter, we have Uranus. Now, Uranus and Neptune, you cannot see with the naked eye. You do have to have a pair of binoculars or a telescope to see them. Um, but there are um, a couple of opportunities, or at least for Neptune, that will make it a little bit easier to find um, than just trying to guide yourself like halfway between Venus and Jupiter. So over the month, Venus is continuing to move away from the sun, which is going to put it higher and higher on our horizon and up for longer and longer uh, in the evenings. Um, and so eventually, Venus is actually going to pass Neptune as it makes its way outward. So around um, February 14th and 15th, uh, Venus is going to be passing Neptune. So if you want to try and find Neptune, this would be a good time to do it because it's going to be right near the planet Venus. Um, and Venus is going to be really easy to find. Uh, so you just have to look in the area of the sky around Venus to hopefully find Neptune. Um, then uh, as Venus continues to make its way further from the sun, it will also get closer to Jupiter. So on the nights of February 22nd and February 23rd, uh, we're going to have the moon nearby, or sorry, it's February 21st and 22nd. Um, we're going to have the moon hanging out with Jupiter and Venus as well, uh, which would make for, I think, a really cool photo op if you're interested in like night sky photography. Um, this could be a really cool one to get. And that's is our planet update. So Mercury, we've got for just the very beginning of the month over in the morning sky. Um, Saturn, we're saying goodbye to. Um, the rest of the planets are visible up in the evening sky. Um, and yeah, this could be a, some fun, some fun planet gazing for this month. All right. Um, one last cool thing that you can see in February is something called the zodiacal light. So our solar system is full of lots of debris, lots of essentially dust and grains of sand that strewn all throughout the solar system in between the planets. And the sunlight will reflect off of those um, and create this kind of glow. Now, most of the time, it's difficult to see this glow, um, but about twice a year in the fall and in the spring, we are oriented just right with this uh, dust and with the sun that we're able to more easily see what's called the zodiacal light. Um, so if you want to try and see it, um, you're going to want to head out uh, in the first half of the month. Um, so the first uh, couple weeks before the new moon, you're going to go out just when it gets dark because you're going to have about half an hour after it gets dark to be able to see it. You're going to need to go to a dark location and you're going to look towards the west and you'll see this wedge of light coming up from the western horizon and it'll be centered on Jupiter and Venus. Um, that's because this is the plane of our solar system. This is where all of that dust and stuff lives. And so this is where you're going to see that wedge of light. Um, now, don't confuse it for our Milky Way, which will be over more towards the northwest. Um, but if you're able to get out and see it. Um, so this is what I was talking about. Again, we have lots of dust and debris. And when the sunlight scatters off of it, we see this wedge of zodiacal light. Um, and here is a really good picture kind of showcasing this. Now, this is a bit exaggerated because it's taken with a camera that can um, capture light for longer than our eyes do. Uh, so to your eye, it's not going to look quite as bright or intense as this, um, but it is still something that you will be able to noticeably see. You'll see this wedge of light uh, coming up from the western horizon. All right. Uh, last up, let's talk about uh, satellites, um, because on any given night, you can see quite a few satellites passing through the night sky. The general rule of thumb, um, if it's moving and blinking, it's a plane. If it's moving and not blinking, it's a satellite. Um, and I 
telling you, you stay out for even an hour, half an hour, uh, you will see at least one satellite flying over. Um, now, we don't always know, uh, well, you can look up what these different satellites are. There's lots of them. Um, but if you're wanting to look for one in particular, a good one to look for is the International Space Station. Um, so the International Space Station makes uh, one orbit around the Earth every roughly 90 minutes. Um, and depending on its path, sometimes it will pass over your location. Um, we know those orbits well in advance, which means we can get, excuse me, um, information on when we will be able to see from our location. So for us here in Duluth, um, we have uh, several opportunities in the month of February to see the International Space Station. Um, if you live in a different location, you can get the same information by going to this website, heavens-above.com. It's also linked in the video description. Uh, and you can put in your location and click on ISS, and it will give you the same information for you. Um, if you want to get out to try and see it, you're going to want to make sure you find a date and a time that works for you. Um, and generally, I recommend looking for uh, the smallest magnitude value, because the magnitude system, this is for brightness, it's a little bit backwards. The smaller the number, the brighter an object is. Um, so something like here on the 21st, we're going to have some really bright ISS passovers. Um, and that light that we're seeing um, is sunlight reflecting off of these solar panels on the ISS. Now, once you have a date and time that you are interested in, you can click on that date and it will take you to another page that will show you a map of the night sky uh, with the space station's path marked out and will also give you some more timing information as well so that you can know exactly when and where to look in the sky to be able to see it. All right, well, that is our astronomical events for February. Um, so let's talk about what we're doing in the planetarium. Um, this week, we have uh, Expedition Moons on Friday. Um, and Saturday night, we have a new show, uh, Seeing a Photon's Journey Across Space, Time, and Mind. Um, we do not have an afternoon show this weekend um, due to a special event that we have going on at UMD. Um, but for the rest of February, our Saturday afternoon show will be In My Backyard, which is a great show for younger kids. Um, and as always, let me show you a quick little trailer of our two shows that we have for Saturday. Um, so again, this is In My Backyard. Well, not this Saturday. For every other Saturday in February, this will be showing at 2 p.m. Let me welcome you all to my backyard. What will you find in my backyard? Open your eyes and begin to explore the wonders of life in my backyard. You can play, you can swing in my backyard. That, that date timer, not us. Um, but yeah, it's like I said, great show for younger kids. It's really fun. Um, got some sing-alongs. Um, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then our Saturday evening show for February is going to be Seeing a Photon's Journey Across Space, Time, and Mind. It's narrated by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, and basically follows um, a beam of light as it travels from a distant celestial object through a telescope to your eye and through the uh, neurons in your brain to form an image in your mind that you see. Um, it's really fascinating, but here, let me just show you the trailer.
All right. Uh, if you're curious why it's a circle, that's actually the um, movies and videos that we put up on the dome and the planetarium. They're actually they're in a circle since the dome is circular. Um, so that's why it's in this this weird format because it's it, it's a full dome preview. But um, yeah, that is our Saturday shows. Um, some really great ones. Uh, and the last thing to let you know about, we finally have um, our astronomy day for this year scheduled. It is going to be on Saturday, April 1st from 6 to 9 p.m. As usual, we are going to have fun hands-on activities, planetarium shows, telescope viewing if the weather cooperates with us. It's a fun, free event for all ages. Um, and as we get more information and more details, we will let you know. But for now, save the date. This is astronomy day for this year and we're very excited about it. All right, well, I think that brings me to the end of everything I have to say for tonight. Um, do we have any other questions? We have one more. It was just asking if it was John Denver's voice in the video. I, uh, I oh, I for in my backyard. One. It was probably uh, in my backyard. Um, no, that is Frank something. I can't remember his name. He was a children's show performer um, for I want to say like PB the local PBS station down in the in Minneapolis St. Paul area. Um, but it's the voice of of a a children's show performer. But it's a, it's a fun show. I still have the song stuck in my head which it's pretty fun yep yeah it's always great um yeah so that's what's up for february um if you want to know more about specific constellations or stars that are up this month you can always check us uh out the stream next week that is what we will be doing then um but until then let's see Frank needs to record more. Yeah, it's it's a really good one. Um, yeah. All right, maybe we'll do one last call for any questions. Um, don't forget, if you want to check out that Comet live view, um, link is in the video description. Um, thanks to the, the Virtual Telescope Project for doing that. I'm very excited. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to check it out tonight. Yeah, I'm probably going to put it up. <laughs> Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any questions. Nova has already said her goodbyes. She got tired of her fame, I guess. Uh, she's <laughs> never tired of that. She probably was cold and wanted to go sleep on a blanket because for those who don't know, it is absolutely frigid in Minnesota for the past it's week. Especially in northern Minnesota. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Uh, it was like negative 17. Uh this morning, my car didn't even start. It was, it was pretty, it's pretty, pretty frigid up here. Um, yeah, so she probably just went to go warm up a little bit. But uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, again, we do this every Wednesday. Uh, we have our in-person shows at the Planetarium on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, and yeah, hopefully we will see you again in the future. Um, but until then, have a wonderful rest of your night evening um and a wonderful week and weekend as well so bye everyone <laughs>